train services from East Anglia terminate at the former Great Eastern Railway terminus in Liverpool Street, seen here in June 1975. At this time, the two long centre platforms, 9 and 10, reached almost up to the Great Eastern Hotel and were used mainly by intercity services, which at that time were hauled by Class 37 and Class 47 diesel locomotives. Alongside platform 10, the taxi ramp was accessed from the centre of the platforms via a road bridge across the outer ends of platforms 11 to 18. Here a class 47 departs with an intercity train probably bound for Norwich. It includes a buffet car. Meanwhile, the Class 37 locomotive that brought the train into the station is released. On the eastern side of the station, a suburban train of Class 306 Shenfield stock is departing. This comprises three three-car units. Another Class 37 departs with intercity stock. This Class 31 diesel loco is hauling an express parcels train. The western train shed, covering platforms 1 to 8, was used mainly by suburban services to Chingford, Enfield Town, Hartford East and Bishop Stortford. These were usually worked with three car class 305 units. The eastern train shed, covering platforms 11 to 18, was used mainly by services to Shenfield, South End Victoria, Clacton and Walton on the Naves. These Class 306 units were introduced in 1949 where the line to Shenfield was electrified and became known as Shenfield units. Express services to Clacton and Walton were provided by these distinctive Class 309 units built in 1962 and based on the BR Mark I body shell. They were painted maroon when delivered. Moving to Norwich Thorpe Station in 1975, intercity services were in the hands of Class 37 and 47 diesel locos. Cambridge 2 was still dependent on diesel traction.
back at Liverpool Street, we will now look at suburban services to Shenfield. Electrification of the 20 miles between Liverpool Street and Shenfield was first planned by the LNER before the Second World War to replace intensive steam working on this commuter route. Some initial work was carried out from 1937 but suspended during the war. Electric services eventually commenced in 1949 using these Class 306 steel-bodied units designed by the LNER. A total of 92 three-car units were supplied to work the services. These had air doors to speed boarding. When delivered, they were painted green. The original electrification was at 1500 volts DC. However, a change of policy saw them rebuilt for AC working between 1958 and 1960. This involved moving the flat roof section and pantograph from the driving motor car to the centre trailer coach and mounting a transformer and rectifier between the bogies. The motor coach roof was then rebuilt to full height. Outside Liverpool Street, Three overbridges, including Wheeler Street and Brick Lane, were rebuilt to provide clearance for the overhead lines. The line was converted to 6.25 kV AC in 1960, following successful trials between Colchester and Clacton and Colchester and Walton on the Nays, which had been electrified in April 1959. The voltage across the region was further raised to 25 kV throughout in 1980. Twenty-three units of this Class 309, 100 mile an hour Essex Express stock were supplied for the electrification to Clacton and Walton. There were 15 four-car units and eight two-car units. The first station out of Liverpool Street is at Stratford, where there is interchange with London Underground Central Line. The station was rebuilt for the Shenfield electrification to give cross-platform interchange with the Central Line which reached here in December 1946. The train of Clacton units speeds non-stop through Stratford as it passes an outer suburban train comprised of recently overhauled Class 308 units. Central Line services were in the hands of 1962 stock at this time. This Chenfield bound Class 306 unit slows to a stop.
some outer suburban services were in the hands of 32 of these British Railways designed slammed or Class 307 units. They were built for the South End electrification in 1956. The Class 306 motor cars and trailers were built by Metro Camel, whilst the driving trailers were built by the Birmingham Railway Carriage and Wagon Company. Another Class 307 speeds into Stratford bound for Liverpool Street. These rush hour scenes were filmed between Maryland and Forest Gate. In these scenes at Forest Gate, we can see the blue tiling applied to the waiting room when some stations were modernised as part of the electrification scheme. This outer suburban class 308 train does not serve Forest Gate. The internal decor of the Class 306 units comprised light and dark veneers. Ilford is an important commuter stop on the Shenfield line. The Shenfield units had passenger door controls. This down train is descending into the station from the flyover between Manor Park and Ilford. It was completed in 1940 to take suburban tracks across the main lines, giving inner suburban trains an uninterrupted journey from Liverpool Street to Shenfield. This Liverpool Street bound train is stopping at Goodmay's. These units were mounted on Thompson designed all welded bogies.
our scene now switches to Romford as an up train speeds through without stopping. The top speed of these units was 75 miles an hour. On the fast lines, a Class 47 hauled Intercity Express passes. The distinctive white roof is associated with Stratford Motive Power Depot. Still at Romford, a Shenfield set arrives on a down stopping service. Idia Park is a short working point on the inner suburban service and some trains stable beyond here overnight. The old style indicators are seen in this 1981 scene. We have now reached Shenfield the end of the original 1949 electrification scheme. The electrification was extended from here to Chelmsford in June 1956 and to South End Victoria in December 1956. Still at Shenfield, a Class 307 unit enters one of the up platforms. Meanwhile, a Clacton unit bound for Liverpool Street passes the signal box. This Intercity Express is also London bound. These Class 307 four-car outer suburban units were introduced in 1956. Back at Liverpool Street, we see a Class 312 unit departing on an outer suburban service. This class was delivered from 1976. Replacement of the Class 306 units began in 1980, when new Class 315 inner suburban units started to arrive. Built at York, these were designed for 25 kV AC operation from the outset and had thyristor controls. Overhauls of the original Shenfield units continued through 1980. As this Class 315 arrives at Stratford, we can see the rebuilt platforms with the blue and white tiling. Moving to Manor Park, we see Class 306 units during their last weeks of operation. From June 1st 1981, they were relegated to peak hours, as sufficient 315s were available for the off-peak service.
At Seven Kings we see both new and old trains. Bicycles could be accommodated in the vestibules of the Shenfield units. Now some peak hour scenes at Romford. Here we are back at Gidea Park. One of the class 305s arrives bound for Liverpool Street. some on-board scenes on a London-bound Class 306 Shenfield unit. Here we are passing Ilford Depot, built for the 1949 electrification. We alight at Stratford. at Romford once more. As this train departs, a Romford to Upminster DMU can be glimpsed in the bay platform. This is Gidea Park. As we leave Gidea Park, the stabling sidings are visible. The next station is Harold Wood. This is Brentwood. Finally we arrive at Shenfield, the end of the inner suburban service. The class 315 arrives and, after depositing its passengers, heads for the sidings. This passing train 
is led by a Class 302 unit, more often associated with the Fenchurch Street services. We take our last look at the Class 306 units in service as this train terminates at Chenfield. By the end of September 1981, only two sets were usable. The last run of the Shenfield set was an RCTS rail tour on Saturday the 3rd of October 1981. After the mail has been unloaded, it will head back to Liverpool Street. These distinctive units had served the line for 33 years. As part of a plan to provide better transport in the London Docklands, the DMU service was inaugurated between Camden Road and North Woolwich. Here, the Cravens built Class 105 DMU heads towards North Woolwich from Stratford Low Level. In the opposite direction, another heads for Camden Road. We will now step on board for a journey to North Woolwich. This bridge carries Silvertown Way over the railway. Here we approach Custom House Station. This tunnel passes under the waterway connecting the Royal Victoria and Royal Albert docks. Here we approach Silvertown station with the Tate and Lyle sugar refinery on the right. The end of the branch is at North Woolwich. Returning towards Stratford, we pass under the waterway once more. The next stop is at Canning Town, where the line passes under the busy A13. This section of line is much altered now, since the building of the Docklands Light Railway and the Jubilee Line. A new station was opened at West Ham to give connection with the district line. Today, the Jubilee Line parallels the line all the way to Stratford and there is a new platform on the Fenchurch Street line. Here we are passing the site of the former Stratford Market station. 
Finally, we approach Stratford Low Level. Today, the Jubilee Line terminus occupies the land on the left, and the new low level platforms are incorporated into the new station building. We will now turn our attention to the former London Tilbury and South End Railway terminus at Fenchurch Street. It was owned by the LMS prior to nationalisation in 1948. It passed to the Eastern Region of British Railways in 1949. The station has two island platforms. Most services were provided by Class 302 EMUs, introduced in 1958 for the electrification of the LT and S lines to Tilbury, Southend and Shubra Ness. In total, 112 of these four car units were built. Two platforms have been electrified in 1949 for services to Shenfield via Stratford, but were little used. Electric services on the LTNS started in 1961, with a full electric service replacing steam from the following year. This departing train is seen from the Docklands Light Railway at Tower Gateway. At Bromley by Bow, the LT and S runs alongside the district line, and here a westbound train of Arstock arrives. As it departs, the train of Class 302 stock speeds eastwards in the background. Some Frenchurch Street services were operated by these Class 308 units. Bromley by Bow is also served by the Hammersmith and City Line, which is operated by Sea Stock, but this time it was unpainted. Another Class 302 speeds past West Ham Underground Station in the days before an interchange platform was provided. Huntminster Station is served by District Line and LTNS trains 
as well as the branch from Romford. This train from Greys is terminating at Upminster in the east-facing bay platform. As this train leaves Upminster, it passes the London Transport signal box that controls access to the depot. This westbound train of District Line COCP stock is arriving at Barking, where there is interchange with the LTNS. For the commencement of electric services on the LTNS, a new depot was constructed at East Ham on the site of the former District Line Little Ilford depot. At Purfleet, a Class 47 locomotive heads a train of bitumen tanks towards one of two refineries served by the line. Still at Purfleet, a London-bound Class 302 passes the signal box by the level crossing. At this time there was considerable oil traffic generated by the Mobile refinery at Corriton. A number of withdrawn Class 307 units were transferred to West Yorkshire in 1990 to work the Doncaster to Leeds service and were painted in the PTE colours. In 1993 they were replaced by Class 308s. Still at Doncaster in 1990, we see a newly built Class 322 Stansted Airport unit on test from York Works. These were built as a modified form of the outer suburban Class 321, specially designed for the dedicated airport service, with provision for passengers with large amounts of luggage. Development of Stansted as one of London's major airports had created the need for a rail link off the Cambridge line. These scenes show one of the five dedicated Class 322 units arriving at the airport station shortly after its opening. This is Stamford Airport. The train now at Platform 3 terminates here. All change at Platform 3. Airport trains were branded as the Stansted Express and apart from a stop at Tottenham Hale for interchange with the Victoria Line, ran non-stop to the airport. The airport station has an island platform. These units were only used on this service for a limited period and then moved to the northwest. In 2002, 
They were transferred to Scotland to work the North Berwick branch out of Edinburgh, but all have now returned south. They were replaced on the Stansted service by nine specially modified Class 317 units. Back at Stratford, an outer suburban train passes non-stop towards Liverpool Street. Network South East was created in 1986 and rolling stock was progressively repainted in the red, white and blue livery as seen on these units. By this time, most inner suburban services were worked by these Class 315 units. Here we see the new livery as applied to a Class 309 set. Most container traffic to and from the port of Felixstowe passes through Stratford on its way to the North London line. This Freightliner train is being hauled by two Class 37 diesel locomotives. This Class 47 is taking bitumen tanks back to Corriton Oil Refinery. Next, the Class 37 loco running light. Moving to Ilford, another Freightliner passes. Still at Ilford, a Class 305 comes to a stop. At Shoreditch, on the East London line, a Class 307 can be seen in the distance. Leaving Limehouse on the Docklands Light Railway, we pass a train coming from Fenchurch Street. Still on the DLR, we pass a train of Class 310 units on our way to Stratford. The DLR first opened in 1987. We will now spend a few moments watching the variety of train movements visible at Stratford in the early 1990s. Some Class 47s were painted in Network South East livery. This one is named King's Lynn. These new 100 mile an hour Class 321s built at York were introduced in 1990 for outer suburban services. They finally replaced the Class 309 Clacton units in 1994. The Class 315s gradually acquired the Network South East livery. Here we have a pair of Class 312 units in the Network livery. This Class 302 is one of four adapted for Royal Mail services in the early 1990s.
this class 315 is passing a DLR train in the bay platform. The leading class 37 on this double-headed eastbound freightliner has the BR large logo livery. This three-car class 305 is probably bound for Ilford Depot. They were normally used on services to Chingford and Enfield. More bitumen tanks pass Stratford. Following electrification of the North Woolwich branch and its linking to the North London line, Class 313 dual voltage EMUs worked through Stratford Low Level from North Woolwich to Richmond. There is a small railway museum at North Woolwich Station. This Leyland Titan bus is on Route 69. Here we see a Class 313 unit at North Woolwich. Once again we are at Stratford Low Level as a train departs for Richmond via the North London line. By the time this was filmed many locomotives carried rail freight livery. These Class 321s were delivered in 1990 and Great Eastern services received 77 four-car units. Following electrification of the line to Norwich in the mid-1980s, Class 86 electric locos took over intercity services. Here one is seen passing Ilford. They operated in push-pull mode with driving trailers originally built for the Glasgow to Edinburgh service. Class 90 electric locos appeared on Freightliner trains. Back at Liverpool Street, a Class 305 unit terminates. Class 317 units displaced from the Bedford electrification, were transferred to work some West Anglia services. By this time, postal trains were electrically hauled. When the Docklands Light Railway was opened in 1987, it took over two of the running lines leading into Fenchurch Street between Stepney East and Cannon Street Road. From a Docklands Light Railway train en route to Tower Gateway, we pass a Class 310 unit in West Midlands livery. The last 310s were withdrawn in 2001. The Class 310 units began life on the Euston Outer Suburban services and were transferred here 
when new class 321s took over the Euston services in 1990. As we reach Tower Gateway, the approaches to Finchurch Street are clearly visible. We now approach at Tower Gateway Station. What change please? Change here for Tower Hill District and Circle Lines. Tower of London, Tower Bridge. <coughs> please remember to take all your personal belongings with you when you leave the train. The British Rail Regions were abolished in 1992, prior to the commencement of privatisation on the 1st of April 1994. Liverpool Street commuter services were franchised to Great Eastern, who applied their green and grey livery to their Class 315 and 321 trains, as seen here passing Pudding Mill Lane. We visit Liverpool Street in June 2001. This Class 315 is in a plain white paint scheme awaiting branding vinyls. The former intercity services were worked by the Anglia franchise, whose livery has been applied to this Class 86 loco. This Class 170 Turbo is in the short-lived Anglia colours, while this Class 317 is in a former West Anglia Great Northern livery. On the 2nd of June 2001, the preserved Class 306 unit, 017, was given the opportunity to run in public service. It had been restored to its early green livery with small yellow warning panels. Here the preserved unit is arriving at Ilford. In preservation, it is restricted to working at 65 miles an hour. On the fast tracks, an Anglia liveried class 86 loco speeds an express towards London. At Harold Wood, we see Class 315s and 321s in First Great Eastern colours. Now some scenes at Gidea Park as our camera waits for the special to arrive.
reserved unit is normally stored at Ilford Depot. The scene now moves to Stratford. This Anglia Turbo had only recently been delivered. Once again, we see the Preserve Class 306 unit in service as it arrives at Stratford, bound for Shenfield. Many enthusiasts took the opportunity to have an historic ride. The Finchurch Street services have been re-equipped with these Class 357 Electrostar units built at Derby in two batches between 2001 and 2002. In total, 74 four-car units were built for these services. The initial units were delivered in plain white which was later relieved by green doors. At Limehouse there is interchange with a DLR. A few of the Class 312 slam door trains were still in service at this time. They last ran on the 31st of March 2003. There are 46 four-car units of Electrostar Class 3571 and 28 four-car units of Class 3572. A few late evening services are diverted to run from Liverpool Street.
When the franchise was renamed C2C, the white and green livery was replaced on later deliveries of new stock with this blue colour scheme, complete with the new C2C branding. For the final section, we return to a very different Liverpool Street to the one we saw in 1975. Between 1986 and 1992, the station was extensively rebuilt. An enlarged passenger concourse was created by cutting back platforms 9 and 10 and clearing old buildings to create a common barrier line. Retail units were located on a walkway above the barrier line and a new roof was constructed in the original style over this whole area. A large new underground ticket hall was built to serve the Central and the Metropolitan and Circle lines. This Anglia Express is arriving at Platform 10 in a similar position to our opening shot of a Class 37. These scenes show the western train shed as it is today. Platforms 11 to 18 and the outer ends of all the platforms have been rafted over to create a base for development above. Out on the Shenfield line, much has changed over the past 30 years. The first group took delivery of 21 of these four-car Class 360 Siemens De Zero units in 2003. These are now running on some Ipswich and Clacton services in first group livery. These replaced the last of the Class 312 slam door out of suburban stock in 2004. Following refranchising from the 1st of April 2004, National Express was awarded the new 10-year Greater Anglia franchise. This combined the former Anglia, Great Eastern, West Anglia and Stansted Express franchises to achieve a single operator for services out of Liverpool Street. Class 90 locomotives have replaced most of the Class 86s on Norwich services. National Express has given the name One to this new operation and has devised a new corporate livery that will gradually be applied to the rolling stock. The divisions will be known as One Anglia, One Great Eastern, One Stansted Express etc but will have a common livery. These three-car Class 170 diesels in the new One livery operate services to Lowestoft via the East Suffolk line and Peterborough via Barry St Edmunds and Ely.
Approaching Manor Park, a Norwich Express is led by a Mark II driving van trailer and pushed by a Class 90 in the new 1 livery. Class 57 Loco, 57001 Freightliner Pioneer, is heading an eastbound container train through Manor Park. This was the first of a number of Class 57s created by fitting General Motors power units to heavily rebuilt Class 47s. The routes to Felixstowe and Tilbury have now been cleared for 9 foot 6 containers. New General Motors Class 66s have replaced most home produced diesels on EWS freight workings. This Spanish built General Motors Class 67 is passing through Ilford on its way to the depot. These locomotives have 125 mile an hour capability and were used on mail trains until 2004. Still at Ilford, a Class 315 in West Anglia livery is coupled to a Great Eastern unit. Rolling stock pooling is one of the effects of combining all franchises into Liverpool Street. This 315 is heading on to the Ilford flyover. At Harold Wood, a freshly painted Class 90 passes in the new blue colour but minus the one branding. The attractive Great Eastern livery will gradually disappear as the Class 315 units are refurbished under the terms of the new franchise. This Class 90 was formerly operated by Virgin West Coast. Another ex-West Anglia unit is seen at Manor Park. Stand clear of the platform edge. Through train approaching. Please stand clear of the platform edge. During 2005, Mark III carriages and driving van trailers, displaced from Virgin West Coast services, are gradually replacing the Mark II sets. As they are refurbished, they are being painted in the one livery. 
between Maryland and Forest Gate, an 8 car class 315 is being passed by a 12 car train of ElectroStars in C2C livery. This Liverpool Street bound express is made up entirely of ex Virgin Mark III carriages complete with a Mark III driving van trailer. At Stratford we see a mixed trade of Mark II and III stock being passed by a DeZero. This 321 is departing from the extended platform at Stratford. A central line train services at Stratford as this ex Virgin Class 90 heads for Liverpool Street. The skyline approaching Fenchurch Street has changed greatly with the erection of the Swiss rebuilding known by some Londoners as the Gherkin. The Class 357 Electro Stars, seen earlier in green and white, have now all been rebranded with the C2C livery. As this Electrostar departs from Fenchurch Street, we conclude our nostalgic look at the Anglia region.